How much would you pay for this photograph? Ten dollars? A hundred dollars? A thousand dollars? In 2011, a print of this picture was auctioned for $4.3 million. What would possess someone to spend so much money on a picture of a flat, barren riverside? This is a story of Rhine II. This picture was taken by Andreas Gursky. He's considered the most prominent member of the photographic movement known as the Dusseldorf School of Photography. Founded by Bernd and Hela Becker, members of this artistic current turned away from impressionistic forms of photography and instead chose to objectively document all levels of German society. The founders of this movement began by photographing abandoned industrial buildings of the German countryside. Pictures were taken in large format, with flat, even lighting and from far away, with little to no barrel distortion or warping of the image. The goal was to document these buildings in a neutral, impassive manner. The Beckers saw themselves as scientists, classifying and cataloguing a dying breed of architecture. Some of their pictures are reminiscent of scientific illustrations you might find in an entomology textbook. Gursky studied under the Beckers from 1981 to 1987, and you can see their influence in his work. He shoots mainly large format pictures, objectively documenting human landscapes from a distant, elevated position. One of the goals of the Dusseldorf School was to elevate photography to the level of painting. During the post-war era, a major source of distribution for pictures was through mass-produced photo books. But what if photographs were treated like paintings? What if they were sold in limited quantities, in large frames? What if they became collector's items? What if they were viewed in exhibitions and galleries and not the printed page? The Dusseldorf School was vital in marking this transition, helping to establish the reputation of photography as an artistic medium during the post-war era, a time when consumer technology made photography more accessible than ever. But how does Rhine II fall into all of this? Of all the pictures Gursky took, this is his favorite. It seems paradoxical. For someone who is known for photographing human landscapes, this picture is devoid of all human life. Gursky actually edited out buildings that were in the original image to achieve this primordial depiction of Germany's most famous river. During the 19th century, a common theme in German paintings was man's relationship to his environment. Scenes would depict individuals surrounded by romanticized landscapes often with mountains or oceans, serving as physical and metaphorical obstacles to overcome. Rhine II can be seen as a modern, abstract rendition of that theme, much like the Beckers abandoned impressionistic forms of photography in favour of objective clinical depictions, Gursky took the romanticised German landscape and stripped it bare, making it angular, minimalist and modern. What do you think? Does this backstory make it worth its hefty price tag? How much would you pay for this? Let me know in the comments below.